Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Malerba. Welcome to All Things Homeopathy. In the last episode, I discussed symptom classification for mentals and physical generals. Today, I'll discuss particulars and modalities. While a general is any symptom that applies to the person as a whole, a particular is a symptom that refers to a specific part or parts, as in, my head hurts, my nose is stuffed up, my foot is itchy, or my shoulder is stiff. A modality is any factor that modifies a symptom for better or for worse, as in, my headache is worse from noise, or my knee pain is better from a cold compress. Now it's important to understand that homeopathy is all about determining what it is that makes each case unique. If, for example, someone complains of a cough but provides no further details, it's impossible to choose a remedy. That's why we need to know how to elicit more information about that cough. And that can be tricky business because most people tend to ignore the nuances of their symptoms. Mainstream medicine ignores those critical details because it's more concerned with making sweeping diagnostic generalizations in order to justify its one-size-fits-all treatments. Patients learn by example to do the same. So when I ask patients to tell me about their coughs, I tend to get answers like, I think it's a virus, doc, or I think it's bronchitis, or sinusitis, or pneumonia. Note that none of those answers constitute symptomatic descriptions. They are diagnostic conclusions, and as such, are not very helpful to me as a homeopath. And that's why I need to ask questions that can help my patients think about their symptoms in more thoughtful ways. So let's review the various aspects of particular symptoms. Think of these as defining clues, as symptomatic details that can differentiate one person's complaint from another person with the same complaint. Broadly speaking, we can ask a series of questions about any particular symptom that boils down to the following. What, where, when, how, with what, and why? Now let's apply these questions to the example of a cough. What is this cough like? Is it dry, wet, choking, croupy, loose, hacking, rapid, tickling, paroxysmal, spasmodic? These examples represent just a few of the many potential descriptors for a cough. Where is the cough? Is it coming from the throat, the larynx, the upper chest, the left side of the chest, the lower chest? As you can see, this question too can have a variety of answers. When does the cough occur? Is it only at night or after 11 a.m. or from 4 to 6 p.m.? One person says it acts up in the evenings and again on waking in the mornings. Another says it flares up at 2 a.m. and again at 4 a.m. How does this cough occur is another way of asking about modalities. What are the factors that aggravate and ameliorate the cough? In plain language, what makes it worse and what makes it better? Or what increases it and what decreases it? Modifying factors that aggravate and ameliorate symptoms are called modalities. Let's look at a brief sampling of cough modalities listed in the repertory, the homeopathic symptom index. Let's begin with some aggravating factors. Cough worse in the morning, in the afternoon, at 1 p.m., 4 p.m., worse from cold air, damp air, dry air, from eating, from spicy foods, acidic foods, from alcohol, from emotions, from anger, fear, fright, when lying, lying on the back, lying on the right side, on the left side, from talking, from singing, from a warm room, and from a warm drink. Now here are some ameliorating factors that may lessen a cough. Better from cold air, warm air, open air, better from lying still, changing position in bed, belching, deep breathing, better from eating, drinking, cold drinks, and warm drinks. As you can see, the list of potential modalities is almost endless. Modalities are very important clues in homeopathy. They can help narrow the choice of remedies from many to just a few. When a symptom occurs together with another symptom, it's called a concomitant symptom. Symptoms that occur together but don't necessarily have a cause and effect relationship 
are concomitants. Some cough concomitants include coughing with asthma, coughing with constipation, cough with cramping muscles, with fever, with nausea, with heart problems, or with indigestion. The final and sometimes most important question is, why is there a cough? In other words, what caused the cough in the first place? Or what is the etiology of the cough? Of course, causative factors are not always clear and can be subject to interpretation. Patients don't often recognize the connections between prior events and their current illnesses. That's why it's important to ask what happened in the months, weeks, or days prior to an illness. I once treated a young girl's severe flu-like symptoms. Her mother told me that her daughter had been a nervous wreck leading up to a piano recital the night before the onset of her flu symptoms. Based on the etiology of anticipation anxiety, I prescribed a few doses of gelsimium. She experienced a complete recovery within 24 hours. Additional symptom categories include sensations as if, strange, rare, and peculiar symptoms, organic pathology, and common symptoms. For example, the feeling that there's a hair on the tongue or bugs crawling on the skin are considered sensations as if symptoms. In other words, such symptoms are not objectively true, but they nevertheless feel as if they are real. Strange, rare, and peculiar symptoms strike one as unusual and are therefore potentially significant, like a child who eats sand or an adult who craves chalk. A Vietnam vet with severe PTSD once told me that he was unable to sleep. He sat up all night rocking back and forth because his knees throbbed so violently. The unusual symptom of throbbing knees prompted me to prescribe a few doses of belladonna which brought dramatic relief to his knee pain, his sleeplessness, and much more. Pathological changes are, are organic changes, like a gangrene toe, or a stomach ulcer, or a squamous cell tumor. They're physical changes to the body's tissues. And finally, common symptoms are symptoms that we normally associate with certain illnesses, like fatigue and hypothyroidism, or itching and poison ivy. Because common symptoms are not unusual, they are not particularly helpful in determining what it is that is unique about an illness. Sometimes symptom categories can overlap. For example, a cough that is worse from 2 to 4 p.m. can be considered both a time factor and a modality. The two are not necessarily mutually exclusive. To recap, we can further define particular symptoms by asking what they are like, where they're located, when they tend to occur, what factors aggravate and ameliorate them, what other symptoms occur with them, and what may have caused them in the first place. A thorough understanding of generals, particulars, and modalities can prepare the practitioner to ask the right questions, and the answers to those questions can help solve homeopathic cases. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the ATH YouTube channel and please join me again for the next episode of All Things Homeopathy. Mm -hmm.